Hello, students of, of Soaring. Uh, glad that you're back on the ABC Glider Ground School. And uh, today is a, not a flying day, not a soaring day. Uh, it's very cloudy, uh, not much lift going on, so it's a good day for ground school. And I thought I'd spend a little time talking about speed to fly, which is an important concept for us to fly uh, our gliders. Uh, efficiently and getting the most performance uh, out of them. And that has a lot to do with flying it at the correct speed for the situation. So it's something that is used constantly uh, when flying cross country. Um, it's something that you need to know to pass your check ride too. But um, at any rate, it's uh, something that we use in, in soaring uh, every time we go soaring. So. Uh, let's spend a little time on it. Uh, speed to fly. So first, speed to fly. What does it mean? It's soaring, and you know, it's it's flying your glider at the best airspeed to maximize the altitude uh, retained or distance covered over time. Uh, that is flying to minimize total energy loss. And of course, that's my definition. Um, you might hear some others that change a little bit, but the concept's all the same. Fly the glider the most efficient that you can. And while the speed numbers are somewhat different for various gliders, the concept's the same. So for this lesson, we don't use numerical values. Uh, men's sink is the speed that causes the glider to descend the slowest of the air mass. And that men's sink is usually several knots slower than best glide. The best glide is the speed that moves the glider the maximum distance um, per altitude lost in the air. So every glider has a glider polar, um, and that shows the, the rate of sink uh, versus how fast you go. So the faster you go, the higher the drag, the more you sink. And this graph kind of graphs it out. And you can see that the minimum sink is of course the highest point on the on the green uh, graph of the glider sink rate, and so you would fly at that speed to stay in the air at the longest. Uh, best glide would be the speed that you would fly to get the furthest distance over the ground, or the furthest distance into the air, um, the furthest distance uh, per altitude loss. So. To determine the best lift over drag, or you know, sometimes best glide, best L, L over D max, both terms are used. Uh, they draw the mathematicians draw a tangent from the from the center of the axis uh, and draw a tangent to the line, and, and that gives uh, the numerical value for the for L over D max for best glide. And now that the sync rate. Um, that the glider is flown, if the glider is flown slower than men's sink, the sink rate increases significantly. So don't fly slower than men's sink. Um, power pilots refer to this as the backside of the curve. Um, so to obtain the maximum distance across the ground, if you're in still air, fly at fast glide, go over D max. In a headwind, fly best glide plus half the headwind. And in a tailwind, conversely, you fly best glide less half the head, half the tailwind. But again, again, never slower than men's sink. So, but since the difference between best glide and men's sink is usually only several knots or so, uh, we just say fly men's sink. So in a tailwind, fly men's sink. Uh, the concept is you, you hang in the air, you loiter in the air, you just hang there uh, as long as possible, let the wind push you where you want to go. Um, and when gliding to get under a cloud, that is where you think there's going to be lift, um, and you want to get there at the highest altitude, fly breast glide, uh, not accounting for the wind, because that cloud, that lift, is going to be moving with the wind <laughs> just like you are like swimming in the river and uh, trying to get to uh, a floating knot, you know, an inner tube or something. It's going to go with the, 
with the rest of the uh, stream. Um, so what speed do we fly and lift? And uh, remember, the glider is always sinking through the air mass. Uh, even if the air mass is rising faster than the glider is sinking, that's how you get lift. That's how you climb. Um, but we, so we want to minimize that sink rate and thus fly at min sink to maximize the altitude gain. But, you know, when we bank the glider over, there's a load factor increases. It's just like increasing the weight of the glider. Uh, and so with a higher load factor, the min sink increases. Uh, but we want to know how much does it increase. So how much faster do we have to fly to be at mid sink if we're in a if we're in a bank? And the answer to that is the load factor. And uh, so when thermaling, we bank the glider over, and so the load factor increases, and we want to increase the thermaling speed, or the speed to fly. It increases at the square root of the load factor. Well. Let's simplify that a little bit and put it into something that we can quickly use uh, when we're when we're flying. So at 30 degree to bank, 30 degrees of bank, uh, the load factor is 1.2. You take the square root of 1.2, that's about 1.1, or you fly 10% faster with a 30 degree bank. If it's a 45 degree bank, the load factor is 1.4. Square root of that is about 1.2. And so we fly about 20% faster than men sink if we're in a 45 degree bank. And if we're really, if we're really wrapping it up uh, into a 60 degree bank, the load factor is 2.0. Square root of that is about 1.4. So we would fly 40% faster than men sink uh, than this, the, the unloaded, the unload factor, the, the load factor of one. Um, level wings uh, if we're in a, so we fly 40% faster if we're in a 60 degree bank. Uh, so we've talked about how to fly, how fast to fly in calm wind, headwind, tailwind, lift. Well, you know, sink. Uh, and sink happens. And if you know you can't just have air moving up, somewhere that air has to be moving down. And so we know we want to fly faster to get through that bad air. But how much faster? How much faster do we go? Because we know the faster we go, the faster the glider sinks. And so there's a trade-off between speed and sink. It's different for each glider. It's a prepare, you know, it's a it's not something you can quickly solve in your in your mind um, on the fly. <laughs> but fortunately, uh, a guy named Paul McCready figured this out in the middle of the 20th century, uh, and his name is now used to describe speed to fly in sync. Um, what Paul did was he made a circular slide rule out of his out of his polar for his glider, and then he put that on the variometer uh, and started winning sailplane races. Um, Everybody wanted to know how he did it, and he was pretty guarded about it because <laughs> he wanted to keep winning. Uh, but eventually, he, he shared his knowledge uh, with the rest of the, of the soaring world, and uh, we have what we call McCready Speed. Uh, he, he was a genius, by the way, who pioneered a highly efficient flight, a highly efficient uh, human flight, did a lot of the human flight, uh, made the gliders that uh, I think one crossed the, uh, the English Channel. Uh, human powered. Uh, he was very into that sort of thing. Uh, uh, soaring was uh, uh, just a sport for him. He, he wasn't. He wasn't his whole life. Uh, there's. A, I have a. Uh, this achievement.org has an excellent uh, write up on uh, what Paul McCready did, and uh, you may enjoy seeing that. So, how does the McCready wor ring work? Um, First of all, McCready zero, uh, that'd be your most conservative setting. And you might use that to get home on a late in the day, your lift runs out and you want to get the maximum distance coming back from across country, you might fly at McCready zero speeds. So in this illustration, uh, I have the McCready ring set to zero. And it shows us that if this 
uh, needle for the vario were to come down to minus two, we would fly at 65 knots. If we had four knots of sync, we'd fly at 75 knots. And if we were in six knots of sync, we'd fly at about not, at, we'd fly at about 85 knots. Um, it seems to be a little typo there. So if you want a little more aggressive setting, you might go to uh, MC2, McCready 2. Uh, that is one you might use for cross country flying. So we set the, the arrow at two uh, and we fly faster if we're even faster than at McCready 0, let's say. So at McCready 2, we fly 75, McCready 4, we fly about 85. Uh, and at McCready 6, we'd fly maybe 94, so a little faster. If we set the McCready even higher, notice now it's up around 4, actually go a little over 4, maybe 4.1. Uh, but um, so if you were in, so if we were in two knots of sync, we would be flying 85. And if we were in four knots of sync, probably 93. And uh, in six knots of sync, we really speed it up going to 101 knots. Now, note this this variometer uh, that I illustrate that I use for illustration is on a uh, DG505, so a high performance uh, two place glider. Uh, the you know so lower performance ships uh, will have a different uh, McCready rig. And they'll indicate lower speeds for the same uh, MC settings that it would for a high performance glider. So, McCready theory in practice. Um, McCready theory says you should set the McCready at the expected climb in the, for the next thermal. And if a pilot uses an aggressive setting, such as, say, six, because he's maybe in a, in a sailplane race. And if in fact he gets six knots of climb on the, on the next thermal, um, and they're not too far apart that he can, and then he, he's likely to find himself on the winner's podium um, and for being aggressive and, and actually the aggressive uh, policy worked out. But if the thermals don't produce at least the six knots of climb, he's probably gonna meet a farmer and uh, call his retrieve crew. So use the McCready theory judiciously and change gears as the sky changes. So if you have boom and thermals, you can turn up your McCready uh, to a higher value. If it looks like, gee, I gotta go through a big blue hole or uh, the clouds don't look as good now as they did a couple hours ago, then downshift and, and turn that McCready down a little bit. Um, this lesson shows a circular slide rule on a mechanical variometer, um, as it, I think that makes it a lot easier to understand. But most pilots now fly with McCready as a, as a feature that's built into the flight computer, um, and there'll be a tape or other type of indicator uh, on, the, on the flight computer telling the pilot what speed to fly in sync. So that brings us to the quiz. And uh, no ground school is complete without a quiz. So uh, this quiz will kind of go over what we learned. And, and like most of my quizzes, if you can't answer it in a few words or less, um, you probably don't know the answer. So uh, let's, let's go through this quiz. Um, and you'll need to know this information, uh, both to fly your glider at, at at a commercial standard um, and, uh, and pass your check ride. So um, this is something you need to know and you need to be, uh, know it well, be quick on it. So how fast do you fly to get the maximum distance over the ground and still air? Well, time to think about that, but the answer pretty, pretty easily is L over D max, best glide. Okay, you're in a headwind. Now, remember, in the headwind, yeah, you, you fly best glide plus half the headwind. 
in a tailwind. Men sink. You want to linger there. You want to stay up. You want to let the wind push you in the direction you want to go. Well, what about left? And then we lift. We also want to fly men sink, but we want to do it adjusted for the angle of bank. Now, faster we fly and sink. Well, that's an easy one. We fly McCready speed and sink. So, to summarize, there it is. What speed do you fly to get the maximum distance over the ground and still air? Best glide. Now, headwind, best glide plus half the wind speed. And tailwind, wind sink. And lift, and sink, correct for angle of bank, and sink. McCready. So that wraps up this lesson. Thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to flying with you and seeing you uh, fly at the proper speeds to fly. Good afternoon, everyone.